this is Fee, Diamond in the Rough, and you're ready for another episode of uh, my travels in Egypt. We'll say up here, I will make it bigger for you so you can have a look. I am working on this guy. Now this is my third custom with Diamond Shop. I will put the links down below if you are interested in that guy. Uh, all you need to do is click on those links and that'll take you through to Die Moon Shops. Um, the customs that I have there. There is also links below that relate to my travel um, website. If you're interested in checking it out and having a look at all the other places that I've been. Not that many at this stage, but getting there. Mind when this uh, coronavirus is all over, I might be able to travel overseas again. But anyway, we will, I will actually, uh, actually might take him off the screen. You don't need to see him now. What I, so that's what I'm working on. Uh, and yeah, I thought I'd take you through Egypt. Um, another thing for you to drill along to while you listen to me telling stories about my Egypt trip. So this will actually be the last of the trip. Um, what, whoops. What you'll find is, so my last few days that I had in Egypt, um, yeah, a lot quieter than the rest of my trip, I can tell you that much, with one little bit of excitement. So, you will hear my mouse clicking as I'm looking through the photos so that I can give you, I can remember what pictures I'm putting in. So the first, this day was, what day was it? Day 12, it was actually the 28th of November. Okay, oh, that long ago. That was too long ago. Um, <laughs> Rightio, anyway, um, that was, the day was actually, I was in Haggadah, and by the end of the night, that night, I was actually in Alexandria. The plan was to be picked up from the airport, so I picked up from the hotel I was at uh, and then to uh, hop on a plane to Cairo and then from Cairo it was um, well my minibus and my old my original driver um, and we drove to Alexandria I think with that was there was also the there what could have been the possibility that I flew straight from Haggadah to Alexandria, but um, that didn't happen, so I don't know why, but um, there was two ways that I was going to get get there, so they gave me the heads up that it could be one way or another, it all depends on flights, but so it's really funny the website, because what the website tells you is Another full day of free time, perhaps some sunbathing, exploring, shopping, or taking up some of the many water sports activities that Hagada has to offer until it's time to check you out, and then you'll be driven to Hagada Airport for your flight back to Cairo or direct to Alexandria if a flight is available. After the flight, if the flight is to Cairo, you'll be met there by our representative who will assist you in transferring to Alexandria by air conditioned vehicle. Um, if it's direct to Alexandra, their the rep would meet me there. And you will then be taken to hotel for check-in. So, free day. It wasn't a free day. <laughs> well, it was, but it wasn't. So, I have this lovely little anxiety in relation to being late. Sorry guys, I'm just trying to... I do have a bit of an anxiety on being late to airplanes. So, I didn't really have much of a free day because it was a case of, well, I'm flying, so I'm going to pack my bags because I can't be late and I've got to make sure I'm down there by this time and over around. So, I packed my bags. So, I had breakfast and packed my bags. I wasn't due to be picked up till, I think my flight was at about 11.30. So, um, 
I had the morning to do what I wanted, to do anything. I will say, however, <laughs> with my not wanting to be late for anything, I uh, was ready, my bags packed, and then it was just a case of, well, I'll have to just walk around the hotel. And that's what I did. Um, I went into the hotel to look at getting my nails done, and they were shut because it was too early. Um, just wandered around, didn't do that much. But I think it was at this part of the holiday where I realized that if I do this again, do this type of traveling again, I will have to make sure I have something to do because I was just a lost soul. If I was a smoker or if I'd only just given up smoking, I reckon I would have been smoking by the time that day was over. Well, before that day was half over actually just for something to do um, yeah so it was very I probably could have done I probably could have done quite a bit of stuff in that while I was um, in the morning but never mind I was picked up I was actually picked up in a car this time so this is my first time in a car no no sorry second time in a car but I was picked up and driven to the Hogada airport and it's quite interesting because of um, the respectful well you can call it respect for women but you can call it no respect for women depends on how you look at the religion um, but because going through security um, women have to be patted down by women. You, you, the men are not allowed to pat women down to make sure they're not carrying explosive devices or anything like that. So I got to the airport probably with only about 20 minutes before the flight was to dep before we were to board. Um, for me, my preference is to be at the airport at least an hour before I'm due to board and three hours if I'm flying international. But so half an hour before we were due to board, I got there. And then because there was no woman to do the search, because, well, we were there early in comparison to Egyptian standards. Um, before I could go through security, they had to wait for um, this woman to come from screening another area to, to screen this area. Uh, so yeah, I had to wait for that. And then I had something confiscated from my bag. <clears throat> this is the first time I have ever had to worry about it. So you take out all your aerosol packs and all of that. So your deodorant. So I have a, a small can travel pack of um, deodorant that I carry in my travel bag that I take on planes and all of that, you know, because smelling nice is always better when you land on a land especially in confined but after being in a confined space um yeah so i've gone through and they've actually confiscated my my deodorant <laughs> and i've turned around and i said i've taken this through so many airports um i've always taken one of these through, through so many airports and this one had actually gone from perth airport to dubai dubai into egypt and then it even took me Egypt Air to um, my internal flights, all my um, with Egypt Air. So I'd done all these other internal flights with Egypt Air, and I was still flying with Egypt Air. But they took it because it was flammable, and it's like uh, I've taken it out of my handbag and shown it every other time. But this time they're taking it. No, it's like oh no. <laughs> You get attached to having certain things when you travel and to lose something like that um, when it's to do with personal hygiene it, it's not it, it gets a bit upsetting which is really strange to be upset about losing a deodorant but it's a travel can it's a small size can yeah you pay a lot for a small a travel can size in comparison to a normal size but um, Flight was uneventful. 
Uh, there was some, looked like holiday makers, but mostly it was men. And quite boring. Can't even remember if we ate, I think it was only about an hour, hour and a half flight, so it wasn't very long. Um, I was met, got to Cairo, and I was met, <laughs> I was met by Mr. Ramadan, so the company representative that I didn't like, he met me, um, and then we got to the vehicle and it's like it was the same bus, and it's like it was the same driver, and it's like, oh, am I happy to see you? <laughs> um, here, yeah, hello, that driver. He was really nice. Um, yeah. Um, so, yeah. And then we've gone, just basically gone through centre of Cairo. We've stopped. Um, and we've picked up this girl. Uh, and I will explain a bit more about this girl. Um, we've picked up this girl and they've gone, this is Miss Susie. And it's like, okay. Yes, Miss Susie will be your tour guide for... Uh, Alexandria and I was like oh okay radio now this is a girl that's um, she's got Doc Martens so Doc you know boots on jeans and um, she's definitely not what you would call a Muslim woman she was not uh, Muslim definitely not um, yeah so, but she was excellent, absolutely excellent. So um, we've driven along a little bit further and dropped off Mr. Ramadan at another location. And then um, we've just driven out of Cairo. Um, one part of Cairo when we're going through, and if I can get the pictures up, should be able to show some pictures. I should be able to show some pictures of, um, we we're just driving along. God, that mouse is loud. And you've got pictures of um, the pyramids in the distance. Uh, you know, which is, you know, even even though I was in Egypt, it was still surreal to go, just driving past the pyramids. Just, you know, these people drive past it every day, and it means something to them. But it's not like it's a wow, you know, I'm seeing the pyramids. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we drove out uh, of Egypt, uh, we drove out of Cairo, drove to Alexandria. I got a couple of nice um, pictures of sunsets, just, and we were moving, so it was pretty hard to take, make these photos, um, but we were moving. Hang on, just looking for my next symbol. What do I want? Uh, L842. Um, so we had a couple of, I got a couple of really nice shots of sunsets as we're driving along. Um, this, yeah, now we went to, we stopped at one place, um, managed to locate some coke, uh, but that was afterwards. Now, Susie, Miss Susie, and it's really funny because it's called, she was, she was insisting on Miss Susie and like she was, she was young, but it was Miss Susie. Um, Miss Susie, we went to the toilet, we went to the bathrooms and she's turned around and she said to me, you know about the paying for the toilet, for it's two pound. And I've turned around and I said to her, yeah, but I've never been able to get two pound, you know, because they, they're actually coins. I said, I've never been able to get two pound coin, coins to be able to pay like that. So they're getting um, a lot more than they, than the normal go is. Uh, yeah so she gave me some coins and I, I you know I gave her some money back obviously but it was really good from that point on I was actually able to pay for the toilet use of the bathroom services uh, for two pen instead of the exorbitant price that I paid for in some of the other parts of uh, Egypt that probably went down really well for others well as there yeah, good tips um, so yeah, we stopped, managed to get some coke, I paid the proper price to use the bathrooms, or the facilities, That's, I was trying to find the right word for it, it was the facilities, um, 
yeah um so yeah and then we traveled on down to what's it we stopped and grabbed food there oh what i ate i struggled with food so struggled with food in egypt um, probably because I'm so used to Western food and Middle Eastern food is just no, not that good on my tummy. Especially not after what I'd gone through um, previously. <laughs> uh, what else? The, yeah. <clears throat> so we didn't really do anything except just basically I was on the bus in the afternoon and in the evening and we got into Alexandria. Miss Susie was explaining things as we went but um, I don't think it was sinking in because it was just because we just traveled it didn't sink in and she said you know what would you like to see um, you know while we're here what would you like to see we do have some things that are part of the tour but there's other things that we can take you to and I turned around and I said to her I just want to put my toes in the Mediterranean Ocean in the Mediterranean Sea um, it's something I hadn't done yet at that point and she went okay we'll, we'll put that in there we'll make sure you do that um, and then we were dr oh, driving in, in Alexandria at night um, I will put some video footage in here but I will say I am so not used to I, 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 I struggle with traffic and then I watch how these guys drive in Egypt. Um, and it's, oh my God. So I will pop some footage here of what it's like. And they merge and drive um, on the lines, between the lines, wherever they can fit. <laughs> Which proved to be, it's, yeah. Hope you enjoy the footage. Four, five, two. So what do you think of that? Pop some comments. Would you drive in that traffic? 
Um, then we checked into what was the hotel name? Hang on, I'm just trying to find the hotel name. Um, sorry, trying to find the hotel name. It's just slipping my mind. Oh, it was the Sheraton Monza. I will throw some pictures in of my room. It was actually a nice room. Nice views. They had a couple of swimming pools down below. Not that I used them. Um, but this is where, and I hope to hell Nathan never hears this story. Because he will never let me travel alone again. <laughs> Okay, so I've checked in. Um, Miss Susie and my driver are obviously staying at somewhere else. Probably, a, you know, not a... Well, see, I was staying Five Star Deluxe. The, the tour, the people that are doing the tours have other places they stay. Um, but, yeah, so they've dropped me off and checked me in and the bellboy or whatever, or the porter or whatever it is. Um came, grabbed my bags and took me up to my floor. Uh, how do I put this in the best way to explain it that nothing happened? But uh, <laughs> it could if, if I let it. This porter, he went, oh, get a photo for Facebook. Yep, okay. So then he put our faces together. Um, you know, leaned over, put face next to me so he can took, take a picture. And then he goes, oh, one more. And then he turned around and he kissed me on the cheek. And I've stood back and looked at him. And then he's just gone for a kiss on the lips. And I've just pushed him out of the way and gone, get out. So basically this porter um, had basically, yeah. Let's just say if I was in for some personal attention, this guy would have given it to me. He was actually, he was hot, but yeah, no, I, no, that's just wrong. And especially considering I'd only, what, been, <laughs> been in the hotel all of about five minutes or so. Um, yeah, so he got a little bit friendly and I basically kicked him out of the room and he didn't get a tip for dragging my bags up. Uh, I think... The tip should have been, you're lucky I'm not trying to charge you for something that, that I didn't want. Um, so yeah, I've unpacked and had a shower and then gone to find dinner. Now, this hotel has layers. It had so many layers, it was ridiculous. Different levels, trying to work out where I was going. Um, I worked out where I'd be going for breakfast. And then I found this place called, I think it was called Mama's. Was it called Mama's? I think it was called Mama's. La Mama's. And a oh boy. A um, couple of things about it. Next door to La Mama's was renovations going on. So nine o'clock at night and they're using these um, cement drill hammer thingies. Oh God, it was, that was really hard to deal with. But I've sat down and I've got a platter of breads, different types of breads and um, dips. So I've got the baba ganoush, which yeah, still love baba ganoush. Um, and then I've looked over the menu and it's, it was an Italian restaurant you know the red and white checkered cloth or all of that and I've turned around three seconds four three I spotted the word bacon on the menu <laughs> my eyes just somehow riveted and found bacon Bugger, missed a one Hang on, where are we going? Where are we going? Where did I see it? Um, so the bacon was actually in the Caesar salad. So I ordered the chicken Caesar salad and wow, did I enjoy that. They could have put more bacon pieces in there. 
And for those of you that haven't followed my travels in Egypt, right throughout every breakfast spot that I went to, there was bacon, but it was beef bacon. So it wasn't real bacon. Gosh, I missed a heap of ones. Um, yeah, so everywhere was beef bacon, and this was proper bacon. Um, Alexandria is obviously catering more for um, non-Muslim clientele would be the best way to put it. So you know they're having they had bacon on their menus, and I think I even had managed to have bacon for bre breakfast as well. Um, but yeah, it was a really really enjoyable meal. Uh, I went back to La Mama's the next night because I spent another night there. The, next, the second night I went to La Mama's as well. I had something else but I can't remember what it was. But it didn't taste as good. Um, but yeah, it was great to eat something that um, I could recognise on the menu. <laughs> That's the hardest thing when travelling, isn't it? Finding something you recognise on the menu that you're game enough to eat. Um... Yeah, so I was game enough to eat that. I didn't. I don't know what I ordered my next night, uh, but yeah. Um, I will say from the point of being in that hotel, I was actually, I was on edge because of that. Um, the guy that brought my bags up, I was on edge. And so whenever I was out in the hotel, I was looking to see if I could spot him. Um, it was the first time in my travels that I've actually felt like I've had to put the, the chain lock on the door, um, which I did when he left the room, I, I immediately put the chain lock on the door. It's the first time I've ever felt that I had to do that um, in my travel in Egypt. Uh, which, when you consider it, the fact that you look at Egypt and you think of, you know, not being a safe place to travel. And then the one point that I found it not safe was actually in this hotel that I was staying at, you know. Um, but, yeah. So, now, that night was quite interesting after that because I've gone up to my room and updated my website as I did each day almost every day six four eight six four eight and something happened that I was very surprised about I actually had a jumper and I needed to put it on I it was cold um, I found a tried to work out the heating I couldn't figure that out but I put my jumper on and I was cold I went out to the balcony to take some pictures to discover that it was actually raining so you know to go to it's not something you think of Egypt Egypt and rain don't go together well in Alexandria it does rain <laughs> um, so yeah I actually got felt to be um, got rained on in Alexandria um, what else so that was it for the first night in Alexandria a little bit of a troubled sleep but I had the chain on the door so I had confidence that that chain would do what I needed it to do <laughs> uh, okay so the next morning I've come down ready to go out um, at still it was a miserable gray overcast day it was yeah you know, the start of the day was horrible weather um, hang on, is that the wires I think that's the wires um, yeah it was just horrible miserable weather being picked up and where did we go uh, I 
okay we've picked up and then taken to what palace was it can't remember was it that one or was it that one um So we've gone through, I just looked at my website then. What I turned around and put was the real streets of Alexandria. Um, and what I meant by that, so we went, when we travelled, we got in the bus, we travelled around a bit, and we did go to what I class as the real streets of Alexandria, which is where, um, if, I don't know how to put it, but it just life happened there. Um, there was no hiding, there was no way of hiding life. But I think that might, might be just because um, other places I've been to have been so basically clean. Um, and I don't mean it in, the, in a horrible way. I mean, as in when you do tours, your tour guides take you to places that they want you to see not places that aren't kept pristine type thing i don't know if that sounds if you're getting what i mean um but going to south africa our tour guide kept us to the nicer part of town as opposed to going anywhere near the the um well the slums basically the shacks shanty town like in uh, south africa so you know but I don't think there was a choice because the way that Alexandria was built. Um, but I think I've got some pictures of uh, what Alexandria was like. Um, I will pop some pictures in. And then we went to... Um, no, no, no. Yeah, part of driving through there was you see these tuk-tuks, um, or what we call tuk-tuks. Uh, mainly, you see them in India, but in Egypt, they're actually classed as illegal. Yet you see them everywhere. So Miss Susie was actually telling me she said they're they're illegal. They're not. Um, they're not actually supposed to be on the road. They're, they're you know, but they're everywhere. <laughs> And that's how people get around. Um, it's pretty interesting to watch them uh, driving on train lines, on train or tram tracks, uh, and, and yeah, not a care in the world. And they're going every other direction. And then from there we... <laughs> where did we go? We got to Pompeii's Pillar. I will say that I think for what after seeing other parts of Egypt and how big and how bold they are and Pompeii's pillar wasn't small uh, it was just underwhelming would be the best way to put it what you what I've seen all over Egypt is just huge and you know massive monuments and this Pompeii Pillar is just in inside um, just a building, a people, place where people live. Um, it wasn't out of the way. It, yeah, it was just people just built up around it as if it's nothing. Which, yeah, made it seem a bit underwhelming. Still cool to see. Uh, I do have a picture of a kitten now when I was in not come on be when I've been in Aswan and I'd seen the cats and I'd gotten clawed by one I wasn't game enough to touch this one but he was just sitting there he was a cute little ginger kitten made me think of boots oops there's a white I can't remember what the white was so um, yeah I'll throw in the picture of the kitten and the little ginger ninja it's quite cute. Now I've lost the Y. There it is. Ah, 
um, from there we went to the okay to the Montaz Gardens so the Montaz Garden has a strip of beach there that you can go to um, and it was my first time I've ever had to pay to go to a beach Where's that one? so we've gone through to this area and gone to the beach and it was you know a good old miserable day it was drizzling it wasn't raining when we got out of the vehicle thankfully um, but it was overcast and yeah it wasn't good weather and I still wanted to put my feet in the Mediterranean Ocean, Mediterranean Sea. Just something to say I'd done. Uh, that looks like all of these. Um, so yeah, Miss Susie and I got plastic chairs, carried them to the beach with our cup of coffee, and sat there on the beach. Um, yeah, so that was pretty cool. She she must have thought I was really well. No, I don't know whether she thought I was weird or anything. You know, but it doesn't matter if she does. Oh, I found another one. All right, so from there, what did we do after that? Um, We went to this, um, trying to find, hang on, I'll show, find the picture for it. Went to this restaurant, it's really funny, I didn't even make it onto my, onto my webpage. We went to this restaurant and um, it looked like it must have been a fancy restaurant. Um, well, it was fancy, uh, but... Hang on a sec, I'm looking for 3371, 3371, it was, it was a high-end uh, restaurant, uh, Miss Susie ordered for me uh, and, and she, she turned around and said, I'll, I'll order for you, I'll make it a surprise and so, you know, she goes, you should like, you should enjoy it. And she, because she said, you know, not everybody knows what to try at a restaurant, at these restaurants and all of this and that. And, and it ended up she'd brought me, she'd ordered me fish. <sighs> I'm not big on fish. Um, considering I used to be married to a professional fisherman, uh, I'm not big on fish and because I've had so much in the way of fresh, fresh fish where there's been no freezing, no nothing. Um, but yeah, so she did order this, order, ordered this fish for me and yeah, I ate it, I didn't enjoy it. But we sat and talked. She asked me about things that I'd like to see and what, what interests me. And I turned around and said, I, I, one of the things I like to do is actually see the people around. Uh, yeah, it's not just, I said, it's not just about the monuments, it's about the people. And uh, yeah, you can show me all sorts of monuments, but it's the people that I like to actually see and um, stuff like that. You know, so yeah, we just had a pleasant lunch from there. After lunch, that was it, I think. And yeah, just had lunch with her and then we were dropped off at the off at the hotel. Um, that bellboy, porter, whatever, he was at the front doors. Um, so I've just kind of nodded to him and I've just kept going. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, that guy made me uncomfortable. Still to this day, he makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> um, 
So yeah, I basically, I laid around and did nothing for the rest of the day. I uh, wish, it, I suppose in a way, if I'd had some idea. I know Susie said, the Miss Susie turned around and she said, well, if, you, if there's anything else you want to see, we can do it this afternoon. That's what she said to me at lunchtime. Um, but yeah, I just wasn't interested. I, I just wanted to chill out and do nothing. Um, yeah so that was my day in her garden so the next day oh pardon me my next day was uh, not her garden in alexandria um, my next day in alexandria was actually alexandria going to cairo i'll throw some pictures in of um some of the things i saw i won't be able to explain what they are because I, I can't remember what it was I saw one of them was a citadel um, what else did I see so the citadel um, which is cool uh, what else was there oh I was fascinated by their how do I put it their um, rock placement it's really funny but around the citadel because the citadel was um at the on the water's edge and then they had this rock placement but they weren't rocks they were how do i put it they were cement stones or something i don't know the met obviously they were man-made but they were really cool um as protection for uh, the uh, the way the waves were coming in. There was guys fishing off there, and there was kids running around the place. It was really it was a good spot to be. Watching um, students being taken, you know, students their school classes, you know, was to go to this citadel, you know, where they learn about a bit more about their country, which is yeah. Um, from there we went to a museum which had a couple of different levels to it the levels all um, were different eras and can I find it so there was three levels to it uh, hang on three levels to it so the ground level gosh just send that up to the ground floor was basically um, what all about what happened in Alexandria around the um, time of the when the Pharaohs were there then the second floor was the Greek Roman section so um, when the Greeks were in Alexandria and the Romans were in Alexandria and um, the different discoveries that were made and then the top section was actually the Islamic and the modern section so yeah there was a range the three floors showed different periods of time so you can see what what things had changed well not really what changed what had been brought into each culture brought into alexandria from each of the cultures and the museum had quite a few interesting pieces um one of them which i really you well the one of them there is the scribe so we know about the the scribe uh, in Cairo there was statue of a scribe well this is they actually had a bigger one of a scribe um, which is basically it is a normal person but they just had the education and they were they kept records for the Pharaohs and I thought that was a really good really good statue um, it was pretty cool but they always all the scribes look exactly the same everyone that i've seen have been exactly the same same headpiece um same sitting position 
um, you know, there wasn't shown of any any individualism on them. It was this is what a scribe looked like. They had the hair like this. They sat like this, and yeah. So I'll pop that one in there, and then um, the Greek Roman stuff. One thing that I I'll just throw some in without explanations, but there was coins, and you can really see the different um, eras. I suppose would be a better way that I would put it. Um, you could really see the Greek, and then you could really see the Roman um, stuff that was cut that came into Alexandria. And then there was one that got me because. There was a couple actually. There's one with a swastika with um, floral deck. So a limestein frieze carrying geometrical and floral decorations. Most important elements are a swastika as well as stylized floral shoots and leaves. So there was a swastika in this, um, you know, this piece of limestone. You know, so where did the swastika originate? You, know, you get just get that thought about you know yeah where things actually came from and you know and how it relates to future histories from that point and obviously past histories for us now and then so after that one i came across one that was really cool well i'll get to it eventually was actually the leg of dionysus and i took a picture of that um, just for my son because my son's name is Dion and I got the name from Dionysus the Greek god Dionysus uh, god of wine making um, yeah if you actually ha google about how how Dionysus died the Greek god Dionysus died um, I used to use that on my son all, all, all the time. <laughs> I'd be getting there going, you know how he died? You know you were named, your name came from Dionysus? And you know how he died? <laughs> uh, basically, he was torn to pieces. And this is his leg. <laughs> his left leg. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was, that was quite interesting. So that was quite a cool place to go and have a look. Um, then we went to a, well, apparently a well-known and well-enjoyed and well-loved fish shop, 3023. Um, fish restaurant, but it was also a fish shop because you, you could buy fresh fish as part, I think it was downstairs. And upstairs was the restaurant and it was really funny because we got this big table so I will show it to you we got this massive big table for the two of us so just me and Miss Susie and what was it set for I think it was set for six but it was a big round table very very impressive looking um, so Susie's ordered, Miss Susie's ordered my lunch as well. Um, it was a fish. And she turned around and she, while I was eating it, she just looked at me going, you don't really like eating fish, do you? I was like, no, not really. She said, like, oh, sorry. <laughs> she said, if we'd known, we would have taken you somewhere else. Um, but, uh, well, it doesn't matter. We sat there and... She was explaining about some of the things there. So there was a, a boat. Now, if you actually look at the boat, I will show that picture here. That boat has um, one side is the lotus and the other end is the papyrus, which are two important plants uh, in Egypt. So yeah, we uh, it was quite cool to see these boats with the the um, 
basically you've got one end is a lotus the other end is is the papyrus and the boats in the middle so um, it's pretty cool pretty cool to see um, but yeah so we had lunch we waited for an extra bit of time because I saw she suit Miss Susie had paid for lunch and we sat there for a while and I'm like thinking why are we sitting here because we just sat and then um, out comes this bag and what had happened is um, my driver it was his lunch <coughs> so he wasn't to have lunch with us <coughs> excuse me he sat in the sat down in the bus um, or wherever he was and his lunch was was from there but he was waiting for us to bring him his lunch I uh, wish I'd known that because I would have said order it and take it down to him and he could have eaten it while we were having lunch um, but instead he ate it he ate it on the way back to Cairo um, a couple of teas 415 uh, so yeah we just went down to the bus and gave him his lunch and then we were off to back to Cairo and it was quite a very uneventful, uneventful day after that what's that one and now a couple of sevens <sighs> so yeah um, they dropped off Miss Susie we dropped off Miss Susie somewhere I don't know where but we dropped her off and I need the four hang on four I can't see the four for the life of me hang on four four five one um, so she dropped her off and it was the first time I was actually in the bus with the driver only it was really strange because normally there's always been that somebody with me other than the uh, bus driver um, and he took us back to the took me back to the hotel so he took me back to Mina house which is where I'd stayed the first time and uh, he said well we I'll be back here to pick you up at such and such a time in the morning to take you to the airport it's like oh okay yep I cut <laughs> yeah and then that's uh once i got there it was rather fun because i've turned around i had to grab my so i'd done the shopping i'd done extra bit of shopping while i was in cairo and i actually had to go to uh the storeroom where we ha i had it stored so like everybody uses this storeroom you just get a ticket and you pick it up you know when you're ready to go so i've gone and picked up this stuff I looked at it and gone, shit, where's this going to fit in my suitcase? So in my head, I'm trying to work out how I'm going to pack this stuff in my suitcase. Now, this stuff happened to be two massive, massive white bath sheets and six um, bath sheet, multicolor, six colored bath sheets that weren't as big as the white ones but they're made of Egyptian cotton you know I'd brought them specifically to take home I knew I wanted to get cotton Egyptian cotton towels uh, I did actually want Egyptian cotton sheets as well but that was a bit pricey hang on is that all the fours looks like all the fours uh, so I uh, had to try and work out how to fit these towels into my suitcase. That gave me a bit of that gave me a, a bit of time in the with my in my suitcases. Um, from so I've picked them up. I've gone back to my room, and uh, did I take a picture? Oh no. There's actually, here we go. I'll throw the picture in here of the fish that um, we I had for lunch. Um, so that was that one. No, it's 
So that's it. Uh, yeah, so I struggled with the packing the suitcase. Now, I'd gone that night, uh, went back to the restaurant and had uh, the Jenga curry again, but was entertained because the... Sorry, I'm looking for my next colour. Um, <laughs> we, we got entertained because there was actually a wedding that happened there, which is pretty cool to see. Um, it wasn't the ceremony, it was just the reception. But my God, they had a lot of fun. But, uh, yeah, sat and watched that. Had my dinner and watched that. And I had, my, yeah, had the Jenga curry again. So that was just a prawn curry. And I do believe that it was hotter than the last time I had it. It was quite spicy. Um, I struggled with it a little bit, but it was still good. Um, but yeah. So that was, yeah, after dinner, it was, it was, the struggle was real with um, packing my suitcase. It took me four or five goes to pack. Um, because of my flying class, I wasn't flying business, but because I was um, certain tier level, my I was allowed a certain amount of luggage, which was well beyond the weight that I actually travel with. Uh, but yeah, so I, though I do carry with digital scales, I. I rolled the towels, I folded the towels, I tried so many different things and ways to pack these towels so that it, they would fit. I had some stuff in boxes, I pulled them out of boxes and just wrapped towels around them and just to try and save space. It was an absolute, absolute struggle absolute struggle and yeah I had now I had the porter that um, not porter he was must have been a he does a, a bins and a, a cleaning tidying up or something he came around and he was polishing my shoes and all of that um, yeah the the the, when I stayed there the two nights before, he remembered me and obviously I gave a imp good impression to him because, as I discovered, I had over-tipped him too. I was over-tipping everybody. <clears throat> but yeah, which got me a really good service wherever I went. It was really great. Um, next one. What symbol next? Don't want to touch the fives yet. Um, U-turn. Pardon me. I don't know why. I can't see it when I'm looking that way. Where is the U-turn? Right where my thumb is. Six, four, two. No, I'm not doing the U10. <clears throat> There's two colours I mixed up and I haven't sorted them out yet. So I'm not doing the U10. Let's go with the E. And the E, 934. So yeah, I had um, packed, got a pack, went to bed, got up in the morning, had breakfast, disappointed, no bacon. Um, got everything out of my room and um, started heading back to the reception where I was going to get picked up and the trolley guy or the guy that with the golf cart that drives you drive, can drive, drives you around because it's a big complex um, he was there and he took me back up to reception so I didn't have to carry my bags thankfully Mine, my bags were not really a carry, they were a roll type of thing. And where was the A? What was the A? 
eight. I've got the colours are too far away from me for me to actually read them up there. Um, that was the uppercase. Where's the lowercase? And until I get it, it's going to bug me. Three, three, seven, one. <laughs> I knew it was one of the common colours. Um, yeah. So I was met. Strangely enough, it was just. Was it just a driver? Yeah. No, it wasn't. No, Mr. Ramadan and my driver were there to take me back to the um, airport. Uh, we'll say that he. Mr. Ramadan was, um, he was only in the vehicle for a short amount of time, wished me well, hoped I'd enjoyed the trip and rah -de rah all of that stuff. And he hopped off the bus at some point there and my driver took me to the airport. When we got to the airport, um, we stopped and he's had my bags out and, he's, and this other guy has walked up and he's gone, this gentleman will help you get through uh, the airport and get you to your where you need to go to board your plane. It's like, okay. And I actually handed him an envelope and gave him a hug and I said, thank you for keeping me alive in this crazy traffic. And he laughed. Um, he didn't open the envelope in front of me, which was good. You know, I don't think they do anyway. I hadn't noticed it. But because I put it in an envelope, he couldn't see it. Um, but yeah, he, um, I was walking away and then I've looked around to give him a wave and he'd obviously opened the envelope. Because, <laughs> yet yeah, again, I'd over-tipped. <laughs> but for him, I wouldn't say I over tipped because he was absolutely brilliant I did he was a really good driver uh, yep. uh, so yeah that was basically the trip I did um, I planned for it it was an interesting type of travel home I could have flown out at a different time I got into the um, Emirates um, got into Dubai at a different time where I could have gotten onto a plane later and then oh, there's plastic there and then being able to like a connecting flights less than three hours but I wanted to deal with the jet lag a little bit so what I did do is I flew from Cairo to Dubai with it was a 15 hour stopover in Dubai so what I did do as I got to the when I got to Dubai I went to the airport lounge um, and I showered and then I went and found a very quiet spot in their lounge because I've got areas where they have um, couches and blankets and they also provide um, socks and eye mask so you can actually lie down and have a sleep so you know I've gotten to Dubai um, had my shower had a feed went and found a spot to sleep for a few hours um, and worked on getting myself back into a different time zone and then flew from Dubai to Perth that flight was not full I was very fortunate where we had because I I'm a window flyer but got onto the plane and I had there was my seat the middle seat and another seat and the middle seat was empty so it was a it was a comfortable flight home because of the, that extra bit of room uh, and I think when we saw, when we actually saw the coast, 
I, you know, I got, I was, I was really happy to see the coast of Australia. Um, happy to be, definitely happy to have been heading home. That was, it was a long holiday. It was a good holiday, but it was long. And then the woman that I sat with, um, we actually started talking at the very end of the flight and you know, she's had family there so she was actually visiting I think her son or something so yeah it was a nice little talk at the end of the flight and um, yeah Nathan picked me up took me home and that was it my holiday was over I, uh, that was about it so it was a good good holiday um, glad I did it uh, even happy I did it on a as a solo traveler um, there's some bits that I didn't tell you and so one one there's something that I didn't mention it's just because I forgot about it when I was in Luxor and there was a bombing going off and I think I mentioned that you know when I research places I do look at where the hot spots are is the best way to put it where you're told that yeah you you are really putting yourself at risk you know egypt is a place at that time of rethink you need to travel whoops that doesn't go there um but it was still as a tourist it was still kind of safe whereas there was a section in egypt that it was do not travel and it was actually what they called a red zone which is actually where that bombing went off now so we had the bomb go off and that was at lunchtime and then i got a text message from nathan like one o'clock in the morning so he'd sent a text message to me and the text message was if you are near a church or a mosque get away from it now um, obviously he had just received the news or just woken up or something and he was seeing the news about bombing of this um it was a church or a mosque or something i can't quite recall now um and, and yeah i've just had to send him a text message back well no i sent him an email back with a map of egypt showing him i'd actually drawn on the thing i'd, I'd gone like you had the map of egypt right and I put this arrow to say I'm here at this. So when he spoke to me, this I put an arrow. This is where I'm here now. And then I've drawn on the map up here. This is where the bombing was. Um, but yeah, he was. Yep. Yeah. If you're near a church or a mosque, get away from it now. <laughs> it's like uh, you're a bit late. You missed that bombing, and you're a few hours out of it. Too late. And I mean. I wasn't at a mosque at the time, I was at a tourist spot, but I headed to a mosque not long after that bombing, it was really interesting. Um, but yeah, so that was my trip to Egypt. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed coming along on that. I did travel solo, I would say with one exception, no sorry, two exceptions, I felt safe. Um, one reason why I wasn't didn't feel safe was because of the porter, but I dealt with that and I was I was okay. And the other was when I was taking a walk through the night markets um, with Mr. Ramadan and Mr. Ramadan. Let's just say if something had happened with Mr. Ramadan, hey. Let's just say I had more strength in me than he did. So I would have been protecting him. Um, but everything else, these guys did, they looked after me. Um, and I would recommend going there. Although at the moment, it's a bit hard to get there um, because of all the health stuff that is going on. But if you get the opportunity to go to Egypt, I'd say do it. Um, I will say I will not go back there because for me, 
I've seen now that I've seen all the monuments there's no need to go back it, it wasn't a place that how do I put it it's just not I suppose because I struggled with the food it's just a place that I would not go back to again purely on the food basis and because I've seen the monuments now I don't need to go back and see them again um, that's it for those so hopefully you enjoyed the trip to Egypt and some of the pictures I've shown you I do have another holiday that was done years ago with some really gorgeous stunning pictures um, and I think I might actually share that with you too so um, there'll be more I do another lot of travel um, chat I will say with what has happened at the moment hang on I need to find my next oh, I won't find my next thing uh, for what's going on at the moment in the world it will be a while 613 um, it will be a while before I do another holiday Nathan and I were supposed to go on holiday um, in well two months yeah two months time uh, because we now have travel restrictions on us um, and the region is actually on lockdown we won't be going so that is the travel was the trip we were going to do was within our state um, but they've put regional lockdowns on and everything and it's like well no we will not be heading there uh, they want to do it next year let's see whether that happens um, whether I'll do that one I don't know we'll see but that is it um, hopefully yep yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed what I've done um, the stories and it kept you entertained for another hour or so and um, leave me any comments give me a thumbs up thumbs down um, subscribe and hit the bell uh, to be notified of um, when I do my next upload and I will say guys bye for now